So, okay, so what happens if we want to back up our drivers? You're saying we don't need any software to back up our drivers? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So how do we do that? We use tools that are built into Windows. Windows has tools for that? Yes, almost every third-party utility out there has now been integrated into Windows because that's what Microsoft does. They take other people's great ideas. They go, hey, that's a pretty good idea, and they make it a part of Windows. So it doesn't usually have all the bells and whistles and features of all the third-party software, like partitioning and things like that, but you absolutely can do it all through Windows now. So let's see, I've got my utilities disk here, right? This is the flash drive you see me install countless times. And I've got a little note, a little notepad note to myself here on this command. I'll show you how we do it. Full screen. Go to File Explorer here. I open up that flash drive. I'm going to look into these files. I'm looking for yeah, driver backup. See, I don't remember this command off the top of my head. So I just open Notepad and I copied the command line. And all we have to do is we need to create a, a, a file path to put these drivers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open File Explorer. I'm going to go to the C drive. I'm going to make a new folder by right-clicking, choosing New, and then Folder. And I'm going to call it Drivers. Not rocket science here. Then I'm going to copy this command line. Highlight it, hit Control-C, or go to Edit and Copy, either way. Then I'm going to type CMD down here on the search bar. Right-click and choose Run as Administrator, and click Yes. At the command prompt, I hit control V to paste that big command line. And where it says full path of our destination, I will put in C colon backslash drivers. Put that in quotes, hit enter. Now it's backing up all of the installed drivers. No software needed, not rocket science, okay? Now when this is done, bear in mind, this could be a fairly large directory. Let's take a look. See how fast that was? Let's close this out because I don't need this anymore. I'm just just to back up the drivers. And then we'll go to the File Explorer again, back over to the C drive, and then over to the drivers folder. And let's see how big that is. Properties. That one's not too bad, about three and a half gigs. I've seen them up to 10 gigs or more, depending on how many drivers are necessary. Now, some of the drivers we're backing up are automa uh, automatically installed by Windows. So when we're backing up the drivers, we don't know which drivers we need after install and which drivers are replaced automatically after a reinstall. So here's how we deal with this. I will copy, first of all, I'm gonna eject my uh, flash drive. Let's get rid of that. Okay, we'll eject that. And we'll grab another flash drive to put our drivers on. So what do I have? Nothing too extravagant here. Yeah, here's a SanDisk, uh, another fast one here, way bigger than we need. <clears throat> and then I'm going to right click and choose copy or the copy icon because it's Windows 11. Go to this PC, there's my flash drive that's empty. Right click and choose the paste icon. And we're gonna copy all those drivers onto this flash drive. Okay. Now, there's no install on these drivers. So how do you install them? I'll show you. Again, <laughs> people tend to overthink. I do it too. This is incredibly simple stuff. And it's my intention to get you to think more uh, streamlined, more optimized, more efficient. Too many people overcomplicate and overthink and uh, gets a lot of anxiety and frustration when they're trying to do things in a way that's, well, let's face it, the hard way. So now that we have our drivers backed up, I'm going to eject this flash drive like so. Okay, and we'll just set that aside. And you could keep these, you know, for backup purposes in case you ever needed to do a reinstall. 
Then grab my Windows 11. Now, keep in mind, these drivers are just for Windows 11 since that's our operating system that we're pulling the drivers from. Some of those drivers may work on Windows 10. In fact, all of them might work on Windows, but they might not. And certainly aren't going to work on any other operating system other than potentially 10. And of course, the operating system we pulled them from. That doesn't matter what version of Windows 11, if it's home or pro, it's the same drivers. So you're okay there. Now, this is my Windows 11 installation media. And I create that, as I mentioned the other day, using, uh, I download, using the Windows media creation tool, I download the ISO image of Windows 11. And then I use Rufus free software to write the image to my flash drive to make a bootable Windows 11 install, rather than letting Microsoft do it for me. Because when I go to write the image from Rufus, it says, hey, this is a Windows 11 image. I recognize it. Would you like to turn off the feature that requires a Microsoft account? Check here. Would you like to turn off the automatic encryption that happens on Windows 11 Home by default? Check here. And then there's two other boxes I don't check. And then I hit write, and then I have my end result, which is what I'm using. So once again, if we shut the computer down, let's close this out, and we just do a basic, straightforward, Windows 11 installs using Microsoft's media, then when we reboot, of course, we would go to Windows Update to get our drivers, and then any drivers that we're still missing will use our driver backup. And it's so easy, it's going to blow your mind. So by shutting this down, I'm going to hit the power button again, and we're going to go into the BIOS again by pressing delete numerous times, and we'll do the boot override. And we're going to install Windows 11 again, only this time we're going to do it my way, right? If, if you brought me your computer, I'm not going to the manufacturer's site looking for that nonsense and downloading. I'm going to do it myself so I ensure that it gets done right because I have liability, because I have other things to do and I don't have all day to wait for a download, and because I want to make sure that it gets done right and you're not gonna be calling me up telling me you have another virus or some other unexpected event because I used an image that I have not personally audited. So I take a lot of seriousness in my job because I wanna stay in business, right? It's not necessarily because that's what I wanna do, just like to be able to pay the rent and I'd like to be able for my customers to count on me. So here's what I would do. I would go through the standard Windows 11 installation, and because this already has Windows on it, when we go through the setup, we're gonna delete all of the existing partitions. So once again, you're going to lose any installed applications, any data, pictures, music you've downloaded. So we are going to wipe this hard drive out and reset it. So we have to accept the end user license agreement, and we're gonna go through this process no differently than you've seen me go through it countless times before. We're going to choose custom and we're going to delete every one of these partitions. Again, this is the standard install process. All right, so then we'll hit next and off to the race as we go. All right, I'm going to plug my internet cable back in and I'm going to take my Windows 11 installation media out. Now, it's probably going to go ahead and start downloading updates in the background. That's fine. In fact, some of those updates will probably have uh, drivers that we're going to want. But I'm not going to wait for that because I want to just wrap this video up here. So we're going to just skip ahead to what we would do after we download updates is look for any drivers that are still missing. The way I do that is I right click on the start menu and I go to the device manager. And in the device manager, we're going to see items that have exclamation points. These are the only things we need drivers for. So we downloaded way more drivers than that. Not downloaded, we, we exported way more drivers than just those five, six. I think there's five there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that driver disk that we made here, plug that in. Okay, pay attention strongly recommend you pay attention to this because it's so simple. Network controller is not found. Double click. Update driver. Browse my computer for the drivers. 
and point to that directory on the flash drive that we made. So it's under, you go, well, which one is it, Carrie? Look at all those drivers. You don't have to look for it. Windows will look for it for you. So just tell it that's the directory where the drivers are. You find it. <laughs> it says, hey, found it. It's going to do it way faster than you can. Done. Oh, now it has to restart for that driver to take effect. Do keep in mind that some drivers will require a restart. You may not be able to just go one after the other. It didn't even ask. <laughs> it just does it. So that's okay. Just know to expect it. Don't be surprised like I just was. When we reboot, those other four drivers will remain, and we're going to repeat the same process four more times. Anything that doesn't have an exclamation point, you're not missing any drivers. You don't have to worry about what about other things. If there were other things that needed a driver, they'd be listed with an exclamation point in the device manager. So once again, back over to the device manager. Go to the next item, PCIe device or PCI device. Which one is it? Who cares? Double click, update driver, browse my computer. It saves our location from last time. So I just hit next and there it is. That's uh, the Intel serial IO host controller. Close, moves it down, go back up to other devices, update driver, browse my computer. Next, scans, finds it, loads it, done moves it into the appropriate uh, subsection. So we got to scroll back up. PCI simple communications controller. What's that? Don't know. Who cares? Update driver. Browse my computer. Next. Boom. It's the Intel management engine interface. There you know. There you go. There you go and there you know. Finally, unknown device. Uh-oh. It's unknown. Update. Browse my computer. Next. Looks on the flash drive. Ah. It's not unknown anymore. It's our Intel Serial I.O. host controller. Very good. Now, let's close this all out. Just shut it down. Or not shut it down, but close the device manager so it'll minimize all those trees that were expanded. And let's reopen the device manager and everything should be clean. No more devices with exclamation points. Okay. That'll wrap it up for me for today. Thank you to Mara, as always, for the thumbnail and video notes. I will see you all again very, very soon. Until next time, bye for now.